spooky time to tear down the 18 horse cola magnum just the flywheel hopefully the uh, flywheel has this demagnetized and i can somehow figure out a way of fixing it i may end up pulling the flywheel off the ford yt since it has the same engine it's just a vertical shaft they are the same blocks it's just the uh, orientation of the um of the crankshaft is facing upwards on that one but it's a 16 horse which the 16 and 18s look pretty much identical the, obviously i'll take this flywheel here and i'll line it up to the other one and see if they're the same because that engine there does charge so if i have to see if um if it's the flywheel or if it's the stator i may end up pulling that flywheel off and checking that and putting that flywheel on this engine and see what happens but um or even put this flywheel here on that engine and see what happens as well go both ways and then i'll be able to figure out if it is the stator or if it's not the stator really this is not an overall hard job it's just a little um, time consuming side of things since you have to pull the entire engine out to get to the flywheel and to remove the flywheel if you do this in the tractor it would be quite difficult to remove it it's only uh, what is it five not eight bolts to actually take the engine right out and obviously the electrical connections your fuel lines etc so really it makes it a lot easier to pull these engines out to do maintenance on them like to do this type of maintenance than it is to leave it in the tractor okay this is the actual base piece right here so if you want to um take one of these types of tractors the gt models the older early 90s GT models of Craftsman's you need to have a uh, engine or a flywheel that matches this bolt pattern right here to be able to run your accessory drive if you want to stay stock if you want to keep everything stock and factory for your accessory drive so as you can see I got this off next will be I might break this nut loose right here then uh, proceed to taking off all the tin around and get my puller get that on here and uh, get this flywheel off so this is just a quick how to on how to do this it's not uh, it's not a tutorial exact step by step really all you need is a 9 16 and a half inch socket to do all this an impact definitely works nicely on these these bolts are tight and they are meant to be very tight since this drives the entire tractor okay once you removed your eight shroud bolts two on each side two in the bottom two in the top you got an electrical connection right here where your voltage regulator is should be a similar plug to this if you're working on one of these types of engines also you got three wires right here that also come through your shroud you get both your spark plugs and your kill wire so just be careful of these disconnect this one here when it's tight in place it is kind of difficult to get the uh, voltage regulator out you can but um, it's easier just to unplug it and proceed to pull your shroud off. Mine is a little bit stuck on the bottom. One minute. My bad, there's two additional bolts that go straight in. Let me tip the engine up. And I'll show you. Right there. And right on that side as well. My bad. So now, just be careful of your electrical connections and get your shroud out of the way. Need uh, two hands to remove that. So what I like to do is I do like to remove the coil just to get it out of the way of the uh, flywheel. You can also remove your starter if it's in your way as well. This will give me a chance to and check out my starter to figure out why it's grinding so much. Really, it looks okay where it comes in contact with the flywheel teeth all seems to be okay but um get that out it like i said it's a good idea sorry it's a good idea to remove your coil just get it out of the way you don't want to have to go out and buy a coil just because uh you slipped and you hit it and you snapped it off just be careful aluminum but nice thing is with these coils they actually have a kind of like a divorced mount you actually have two additional bolts right here that go into the actual block of the engine. So if you're to snap off these bolts here, you might get lucky and actually remove the entire bracket. And if you're really lucky, 
you can find that bracket. So I'm going to remove my coil, get it out of my way, and uh, proceed to taking off the flywheel. This plastic cover does come off. Really, there's no need to take it off. It gives you a little bit extra grabbing space to hold on to it. So personally, I leave it on. Also, your flywheel magnet, put it up. I know a lot of people say, oh, disconnect your spark plugs and stuff. I'm not. Uh, I can't see any way of just turning this engine really lightly of it firing up. It takes a lot of speed to start up these engines, even with snow blowers. I can't really see just pushing that upwards and having the engine fire up. Uh, it may have happened in the past. I've never once seen it happen. I've done these quite a few different times. Even on really on the time on push lawnmowers, I could kind of see if you twins push the blade, the engine potentially firing up, but still most push mowers have a dead man switch. So I can't really see that happening. Also again, talking about the coil, on these particular engines, you actually do have to remove the coil. As you can see, it's pretty close to the gear on the flywheel. So it's much nicer to actually take the coil out of your way. You could just take it out to one bottom bolt, loosen the top bolt and swing it out of your way like that. That's what I might end up doing. We'll see. It's out of my way. So don't have to take it right off. Just take it off, get it out of your way. Just like that. Now for this next step, I definitely do recommend this type of puller right here. This is a 48 piece bolt type puller. I believe it's meant for um, balancers on engines, on large engines, but it works really, really well on small and medium sized engines as well. So I most definitely recommend getting something like this. The other way of doing this, which does work and it can be more harmful to the engine, you release your bolt like so, you put a pry bar behind the flywheel and you hit it. If you don't care about the engine, definitely do it that way. But if you do care about the engine, get a puller, do it correctly. Okay, with the puller, make sure you have your bolts nice and tight and that you're using the appropriate type of point to go into where your flywheel bolt is. See this one here, the point's kind of worn down on it. I've used it quite a bit. This here goes on the end of this rod here. And you can either use a ratchet or the impact and you pop the flywheel off. Just make sure your two or four bolts, whatever you decide to use, are nice and tight into your flywheel. You definitely do not want to strip these holes out, especially on this type of flywheel here where you need to use those bolts to drive your machine. So get everything in place, use the impact, and pull your flywheel off. It's going to make it so much easier on you than using a ratchet or having to have a second set of hands to uh, pull off your flywheel. Also, these are plastic, so you can't really stick a screwdriver in here and you put any leverage on these. Lastly, what I recommend doing before putting your impact on and using your impact, make sure everything's nice and hand tight. You don't have to crank down on these too hard. Really, as long as they go in enough threads, you are okay. And make sure you're going the right direction. There you go. Flywheel popped off. It's pretty much well as simple as that using the puller. It just puts the pressure on the crankshaft and pop goes the weasel. Okay, once you got your flywheel off, you can proceed to finish up whatever you need to do on your particular engine. On mine, it's either a flywheel issue or it's a stator issue. I want to hopefully get it figured out in the next couple videos and uh, get this engine back together and back up and running and hopefully charging. So I'll talk to you later. Please hit redneck like always and uh, please subscribe and comment and hopefully this video does help out somebody who needs to know how to pull off one of these flywheels. Bye for now.